This is a welcome sign. Welcome. Monarchs, you are welcome here. Veronica Kyle is doing her small part to save the monarch butterfly. At her home on Chicago's south side, she planted milkweed. It is the essential plant for the monarch. We know monarchs lay their eggs on milkweed. The monarch takes that trek from Mexico every year. And on the way, they're looking for hospitality, nutrients. That just thrills me to know that somehow my little house in the hood, my little yard, my little patch is part of that. So that's why I plant it. Ooh. Well, oh, Ooh. it's one. That's, I think that's an egg right there. That's yeah, an that's egg. Great. Oh my goodness. You know, boy, I'm going to be watching this because for every one of these that can survive, then I feel a little victory. And now I'm being very protective. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's going after the eggs, right? The monarch butterfly's storied migration is in peril. The population in the eastern U.S. has dropped by about 90% in two decades. And I think there are a lot of things that are contributing to that 90% decline over the last several decades, but a big driver of that is habitat loss. Habitat, meaning milkweed, plus the flowering plants the monarchs need for nectar. And it's been lost to a whole variety of things. I mean, urban suburban sprawl, but also more ag land. It used to be that the Corn Belt was a really great place for monarch habitat because in your ag fields you had a lot of native plants that would come up, a lot of that was milkweed, it was a great place. There has been a shift to what's called Roundup Ready Crops, so your crops are something that can withstand Roundup spray, but everything else around it dies back. But now a team of researchers is asking a surprising question. Could cities be key to the monarch survival? Do cities matter? Do cities matter for monarchs? If you look at an important migration corridor along Interstate 35, cities do take up a lot of land. You have 47 cities, and they occupy, collectively, nearly a million and a half acres. At first glance, cities might look inhospitable to a monarch. If you just hit a wall of mini malls and pavement and turf grass, there's nothing there for you. But the research team is viewing cities in a totally different way. To get a monarch's perspective, they're looking at four metropolitan areas from above. We've taken some really high resolution aerial imagery called mm -hmm. LIDAR data, and we brought it down to a scale of less than two feet resolution. You see a wildly different landscape. A landscape with plenty of room for monarch habitat. So think about corporate campuses, for example. Many of them just have some turf and some manicured lawns and bushes and shrubs. Another would be schoolyards, as well as churches and community gardens. You also then have all these opportunities along, especially here in Chicago, our boulevards and parkways. Yeah, right. Those are green strips that could be so much more functional. We have green roofs, of course, but we also have the ability, like they've done here with the Park District, to restore really degraded areas. Like the new Burnham Wildlife Corridor on Chicago's south side. A few years ago, a monarch passing through here would have found a grassy wasteland. But now the researchers are discovering it's a monarch's paradise. Oh, I got one. Get out. I've got a caterpillar right here. Get out. <gasps> you do! Animal. You do! Good eye! Of course, any effort to plant monarch habitat in cities is going to require the work of urban gardeners. So the researchers are interviewing people who have planted milkweed to get a sense of what motivates them. Why do people who are already putting habitat on the ground do this? Mm. What are their values, their concerns, their interests? You know, it's so fun to see something that you just started from a seed, to see it bloom and grow. That answer will be different for different people. Yeah. For some people, there is a very deep cultural connection. This reminds me of the migration of African American people, you know, coming to the North. We came for survival, different opportunities. My family's from Anniston, Alabama. And it was people who welcomed us, cousins, grandparents. So I look at it like having the milkweed is like a welcome sign to nature. And I feel like Mother Nature wants the same thing for all of us, and that is to thrive. 
It's a very powerful, satisfying action for anyone, let alone someone in an urban area who doesn't necessarily get out into a lot of nature all the time, to feel that connection, to feel like I did something, I did an action in my own yard, and look what it did. Look what I've done, look what I've helped. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following. 